How do we as a society treat mothers who don't try to have it all or choose to be a career woman and instead want to stay at home and raise children? Well, apparently we don't support them well, according to my next guest, Virginia Tapscott, who wrote in The Australian that mainstream feminism is devaluing motherhood and Virginia joins me now. Thank you so much for your time. This is a very thoughtful piece and you write how you went into the maternity ward as a Simone de Beauvoir devotee. But what changed your attitude after that? Well, it was just, I guess it was the process of pregnancy and birth and all of the um, changes you undergo through that experience and I was just found myself really consumed by looking after this child and I realized how much mainstream feminism dominant feminist theory really hadn't thought through well um, that want often of a birth mother to really take on the care of that child and or the baby and um, yeah it just it was really clunky the way that feminist theory had dealt with that. And it, myself, I'd never really thought about being in this position and it, and it didn't line up very well. I think it's government policy as well, often is focused on childcare, uh, external childcare, rather than supporting women who want to try and combine the two and work from home. And I know that's something that you've written about as well. Yeah, if we want women to have real choice, which was what women's liberation was all about, um, that childcare subsidy needs to be much more universal and opened up to, you know, a variety of different care models, one being parental care, uh, could be grandparent care, more informal care models that really build communities around mothers, um, but also send a message to parents that we really value your unpaid care contribution. We value the time that you invest in your children. Whereas at the moment, the government's policies often nudge families um, into a position of being essentially forced to have to outsource childcare to make ends meet, um, rather than saying, look, we also support if you feel that the best thing for your family at this time is to choose to care for your children. And obviously in this cost of living crisis, a lot of women don't have a choice. You know, families need two incomes or even we're seeing three or four incomes as people get multiple jobs. But other families are choosing to have a different model, um, you know, a lower cost lifestyle to make sure that one parent, often the mother, is at home. Yeah, we speak to a lot of families. There's this assumption that if you're at home caring for your children, there's this assumption that those families, those single income families are really well off. And in my advocacy work and my journalism, all I hear from are from families who are struggling, have made a lot of difficult financial decisions to be able to afford to have live on one income. And then we have policies like the recent paid parental leave changes that actually withdraw support for single income families by meaning that the father can now no longer actually access his um, paid parental leave if the mother doesn't meet the work test. So it's this real um, assumption, it's a dangerous idea underpinning this policy that these families don't need support and they absolutely do. Do you think this is ultimately in, in a way incentivising the mother to, to be separated from her baby often against biological instincts? I, yeah, I, I definitely do. And I will be the first person to say that the, we need to protect the option to be in paid work for um, any mm. parent because this culture that we live in now doesn't support that. And, you know, people end up with no little superannuation yeah. and, um, you know, often homeless. So I'll be the first person to say we need to protect the option to enter paid work, but we need to be applying the same effort to support people who maybe want to invest that time in those early precious years, those families that want the gift of time with their children. Yeah. It needs to, it can't be so one way. All right, Virginia Tapscott, we're out of time. Thank you very much for your time this evening and appreciate Thanks, your thoughtful piece on this.